morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I, I had to get permission from my grandchildren before I could come up. I asked him if I could come up now, so he said, no, just wait a little bit. So when it was okay, he said, you can go, okay. Good morning to everyone. We give all glory to God. Why don't you clap your hands and just tell God thank you. Man, please stand to your feet. Open up your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. What we're going to talk about this morning briefly, probably won't finish it, continue it. Is that I want you to leave from this place today with a full understanding as we talk about blessings. But today we want to focus in on spiritual blessings because sometimes that can be a, a misconception or misleading or misinterpretation that we somehow get confused. Uh, spiritual blessings are confused with uh, physical or natural blessings. And there is a difference. There is a difference. As we think about this, we think about the statement that Jesus made in Matthew, I believe up around chapter 6, when he says, Seek ye the kingdom of heaven first, and all of his righteousness, and these things shall be added. Those are called natural blessings. But then he comes with a warning and says, be, uh, Don't seek after these things. Don't be like the Gentiles do, for they seek after such things. God wants us to seek after the spiritual blessing first. Always remember, spiritual is always first. After spiritual, then comes the things. Uh, when God speaks about, uh, Jesus speaks about seeking after the kingdom of God, that is spiritual. And when you have the spiritual, you understand the natural or the physical. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, Paul write this to the church. Blessed be God and, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. Everyone shout bless us. And everyone shout he has blessed me. Now notice what he says with what all what? Spiritual what? And where are they? In who? Christ. Now since there is a colon which is an indication that this conversation or this sentence is not over. So continue in verse 4 with me. According as he has what? Chosen who? In him before what? Of the that we should be what? And without what? Before him in what? As we continue with the colon, go to verse 5. Having predestinated us to what? Of who? By who? To who? According to what? Of what? Now when you see the comma, it simply means there's a pause. So as you pause for a second, move on to the next verse with me. Uh, verse 6, to what? The what? Of who? The glory of what? His grace. Wherein he has what? What? In what? Period. You may be seated. Man, so what we want to talk about this morning to get understanding because our assignments as pastors are divine. Because in Jeremiah three and fifteen, God said, "I give you pastors after my own heart; they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding." So knowledge is power, and the Bible say, "Lean not to your own understanding." So we want to do our best this morning to give you understanding briefly, quickly, but not too quickly. But we want to make sure that you get it. So, say this with me. What are spiritual blessings? Say it again. What are spiritual blessings? Come on, shout it. What are spiritual blessings? Because I think we can better approach God. We can better understand God. We can better understand the things that God say and do. And even how God thinks when he allows us to know what he's thinking. If we would better understand 
the principles of God's word. So what are spiritual blessings? According to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 says that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ. Let me share something with you. You can throw money, you can throw diamonds, you can throw rubies, you can throw at certain, certain things in life. Money will pay bills, money will take care of problems, money would pay insurance, money would do uh, quite a few things. However, there are some things that money cannot deal with. And you can throw all you want to, but it cannot deal with it because money cannot deal with the spiritual things of God. But see, God says that he has blessed us with all spiritual things. So what is that saying? That's simply saying that you may not have all the natural things or the physical things that you want in life, but God is going to make sure that you have all spiritual things. Notice if you compare that with Matthew chapter 6 when Jesus was saying, Seek ye the kingdom of heaven first. And, you know, I, I hope I'm right, Matthew chapter 6. Seek ye the kingdom of heaven first. So I'm going to do a reference. I don't mind. Make sure I'm there. Well, it's okay. And, and he says, watch this here. If you read above that from verse 1, you would discover what the things are. When he says, seek ye the kingdom of heaven first and all of his righteousness and these things. And we sometimes don't go back to read what do he mean about the things? What things is he talking about? It is the central things that we need for life. Your shelter, uh, your food, your clothes. That's why Jesus tells us, worry not about tomorrow. Don't worry about, you know, what you're going to wear, how you're going to eat, and all of those things. Why? When we trust in God, God takes care of those things. God wants us to seek him spiritually first. Because he says, again, that with all spiritual blessings. Notice in Matthew chapter 6, he talks about the things, the essential things. But here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6, verse 3 rather, he says that I, I, I will bless you with all spiritual blessings in Christ. This is why the scripture teaches us that all of our blessings are in Christ in heavenly places. So if we trust Christ, then he, he's there to bless us with all spiritual things. Somehow, I, I think, you know, and I apologize, I, and you're probably going to start hearing hear this a lot. I apologize for the error in teaching around the world. You know, sometimes we can be in error. A lot of pastors don't like to say it, but I apologize upon their behalf because sometimes we be in error. They mean well, they mean right, but I've learned that when you go back and really look into the scripture, what God is really saying, you would start discovering, well, this is not what God was meaning. This is what God was talking about. So we won't be seeking God for something uh, natural when we're trying to use or implement the scripture that deals with spiritual. So sometimes we take, uh, Sister Patterson, we take the spiritual, Ephesians 1 and 3, and we somehow try to implement that, that what God is saying here, that he's going to give me a house, he's going to give me a car, he's going to give me this and that, all natural things, and natural things could never be spiritual things. See, spiritually, what is the difference between natural and what is the difference between spiritual? Well, here's the difference. Natural is what we can see. The chairs are natural. You and I, we are natural because we can see each other in the physical. Those are natural things, cars, houses, money. That's natural. So what are the spiritual things? Don't you realize, watch this, that the spiritual things... All that you need spiritually is here right now. It's embedded in you and by the way of the Holy Spirit. Well, you say, well, Pastor, that sounds strange because I can understand the natural because I see the chairs. I feel the chairs. I can see you. I can touch you. I can handle you. But what I cannot see is the things that you're talking about spiritual, okay? So what are the spiritual things? The spiritual things is what you cannot see, like the Holy Spirit. You cannot see the Holy Spirit, but guess what? He's present in us. That's why the Bible says in Zechariah, not by might, 
nor by power, but by my word, says the Lord. So it is the power, the Bible says, that work it in us. See, we can't see it, but it is spiritual. So what we do is never with our own might, our own power, but it is by the power of God that we cannot see, but yet he works in us. Why? Because it is the Holy Spirit that has been imparted in every last one of us to give us a ability to do the work that God has called us to do. If you believe that, give God a hand clap. So he says, in Christ. So what are these spiritual blessings and what do they do for us? Contrary to some belief, they are not some mysterious power or cosmic connection reserved for a select few. They are the key benefits of a relationship with God through Christ. If you have a relationship with God through Christ, people, you have to know this. You have to understand this. If you don't, somebody will tell you you don't have a relationship with God. Somebody will tell you based on what they see, how you act, you don't have it. You have to know God for yourself. If you have a relationship with God for yourself, guess what will happen? Is that all of those spiritual blessings that God talks about is in you. Then you can walk in victory. Then you can say what Paul said, that through all of this we are more than conquerors. Why? It has nothing to do naturally. It has nothing to do physically. But it is all the promises that God promised me spiritually that he will empower me to be able to do these things. Amen? So we, we're still talking about what are spiritual blessings. In the word of blessings, still in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, it is the Greek word eulogy. Okay? And it means to speak well of. So when you're talking about blessings, uh, it means to speak well of. Uh, somehow we narrow the blessings of God or we narrow the word blessings only to what we can do. It may be getting a little warm in here back there. Turn on some air. So it, it may get to those points where we think every blessings of God has to do with everything that we can see, feel, and touch. But here when we talk about blessings, in the Greek, it simply means to speak well of since God is is the one acting in this verse, we can say that God has spoken good things about us or pronounced good things for us for our benefits. See, that's why I tell you one thing that you will never un uh, understand about me and hope you get to understand that because you need to adapt to the same attitude. It is not important what people say, think, or feel about you. That's not important. See, what's important is that when you come into a relationship with God and you know what God has said about you, what God has spoken or pronounced about you, see, you have to understand something. If God say that you are blessed, then can't no one curse you. Amen? If God says that he has given you all spiritual things, then the devil cannot do nothing. That's why I tell believers all the time, Quit giving all the credit to the enemy saying the devil is doing this, the devil. He can't do nothing. Why? I'm too blessed. Why? Because God has given me all that I need. And what happens if he is, if the devil have any part of victory in your life, guess what? He didn't take it. He didn't force it. You willingly gave it to him. And so what you need to do, I, I, I hear a, a lot. I used to say it too because it sounded good. And I didn't really understand. So as pastor, I used to say, I'm going to take back everything that the devil stole. Well, you know what? Guess what? If he stole the cars that I had, I'd never gotten them back. People, it's called repossession. It's called when you don't pay your car note, they will repo it, right? The devil didn't take it. You know how most people do. They walk outside. Oh, Jesus, my God. Call the police. They done stole my car. You know that no one stole your car. You got to play it off. Just say, you know what? I didn't pay the bill. It's gone. You know what? But how do you praise God and all of that? See, the Bible never says, God, I praise you. God, I thank you because this happened. No, he never ever says praise him because what happened to you. He says praise him while you're in it. Why? You know he's right there with you. See, if we get these principles understood about God, Life and relationship is so beautiful. You can walk till your shoes get holes in the bottom of them. And when people start looking at you and saying that you are not blessed, you'll just keep smiling because you know the shoes has nothing to do with your blessings. Amen?
In fact, if we be honest about it, new shoes look good. And people will look at you and say, oh, Bishop, them some bad shoes. Man, I show it. Where can I get them? Boy, if I had, to, if you were my size, I'll run you for them. No, you won't because you don't know what happened. First of all, when you get new shoes, at least I do, I don't like them, Trina. I don't, I look for someone to break them in for me. Why? They hurt. Okay? So, so it ain't nothing about them. You're looking at the after effect. And guess what? God, I praise God. Why? He gave me health that I can go to work and make wealth and buy what I want. Amen? So, so those are the things. And I would never stand and say, this is why I'm blessed, because I'm wearing these $275 shoes opposed to you, Brother Dale. You're wearing those pay less patent leather. I don't care where they come from. Thank God no, they're not patent leather. I was just, you know, they, I, you know, thank God I have shoes on my feet. I don't care where they came from. Why? The shoes, the clothes do not make you. It is the God that's inside of you that you want people to get to know. Amen? Because that's what, because I'm telling you, look, when all hell and high water and even when the enemy come, you won't fret because you should already know. God has given me all the spiritual blessings I need. What does that mean? The Bible says when the enemy come in as a flood, God has already raised up a standard that he cannot go against because God has us protected. The Bible says we are sealed until the day of redemption. So who's telling you that the devil is doing all this stuff to you? I'm glad you asked that question because it's you yourself. We are our biggest enemy. Paul said that there's a war going on and it's within my own members. It is you who tell you what you can and cannot do. If you can ever bring you, the flesh, under the authority and power of you, the spirit, you'll see life a whole lot different. Oh, I love the way Paul said it. Oh, let me pat myself one time. Encourage myself. Boy, you're teaching in here. Paul said it like this. Paul said, you know what? Even though I fall into sin and temptation, he said, watch this. It is no longer I. Tell somebody, nobody knows you like you. Paul said, it is no longer I. See, people think you're crazy when you talk to yourself. My wife oftentimes tells me when I'm in the house talking, say, boy, are you, do I need to get a check? I say, you can get a check, but I ain't crazy. It's good to talk to yourself sometimes. See, uh, and look, you don't have to worry about taking medication. You're not going to be crazy. It went on all through the Bible. The prodigal son got out of his mess because he quit talking to people. Now, I'm not telling you to quit talking to people. Go home and get your husband and wives and say, Bishop, say, don't talk to you. I'm going to talk to myself. He just stopped talking to the people. What made him stop talking to people? When you become in want... Nobody wanted to talk to you. But he said, you know what? Wait a minute. Let me think something. Let me think here. How many hired servants my father have? Now what he started, watch this. Spiritually, he had to think and sort it out. And then spiritually, it led him to the natural. He said, how many hired servants my father have that have bread enough to eat? I know what I'll do. I'll go back home to my father and say I've sinned against you and you only. You know what? I'm no longer worthy to be called a son. Make me a servant of mine. How many of you know when you are a child of God, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing would bring you below what God has caused you to be? And understand this. It doesn't make a difference what you drive, what you wear, what you live. Whether if you wear a Javon Musk or steel or you wear black by Jimmy, whoever. It doesn't, all of this stuff does not determine who you are in Christ. It is your walk. When God calls us, he's not going to call the clothes. He's not going to call the house. He's not going to do any of that. He's going to call that which he imparted in you, which is his spirit. Amen. So when we talk about spiritual blessings, let me tell you, it's a lot of rich people out there, but they're not happy. It's a lot of well, uh, wealthy people out there, but they don't have no joy. See, spiritually, he says that what, what are spiritual blessings in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, with all spiritual blessings in Christ. What did Jesus say? He said, I want to fill you with the fullness of my joy. See, when you have the fullness of God's joy, you can go through anything in life. It will not depress you. It will not oppress you. Because why? You have the, all the spiritual blessings that's in Christ. You know, if, if the older, I love the way the older people, a lot of things they said, 
was not scriptural where you can read it, but it was based off their experiences through scriptural. Y'all remember this one? Is that he's bread in a starving land. He's shelter in time of a storm. See, look, the old saints was telling us something spiritual. You know, as, as a young, young pub coming up, I always thought, oh, God is a bridge over troubled waters. Then that means when I get to some troubled waters in my life, he really will make a, a physical bridge that I can walk over. And, you know, and then I had to realize they were not talking about something natural or physical. They were speaking about something spiritual. See, when you know God, you know that Jesus say, I'm with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So tell somebody on the side of you real quick. Don't turn your nose up at me or anyone else. So, you know, and I'll let y'all figure out the rest. So the word blessings. Uh, again, in the Greek word, it means to speak well since God has spoken. Now, the good things that God has decreed for us are probably beyond our ability to what? To number, but we can outline a few by looking at verses following this statement. In chapter uh, Ephesians chapter 1, look at verses 4 through 13 right quick. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 through 13. And I'm going to spare you since we have read 4, 5, and 6. I'll go to 7. In, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. See, money can cleanse you of sin. According to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will. And this is where we get duped at all the time. is because, you know, the older saints would say this. If a man don't stand for something, he'll fall for anything. And this is why you see people trying to buy blessings that they have already inherited through Christ Jesus. This is why you see prophets and prophetess calling prayer lines and saying, let me pray for you that God will give you this, God will give you that. And also, if you sow a seed of this amount, then you can get this. You, can I submit this to you? There's nowhere in the Bible where you ever have to purchase anything that God promised you. It's yours. Quit letting the devil sell you what already belongs to you. Because unless you understand and you receive what has been given to you, then you would always keep purchasing something that belongs to you and you never receive it because God never put it in his word where you had to pay to get it. See? How you get it is you trust him, you obey him, you believe what he said, and then get to, you know, let me, let me call a witness. Let, let, me jump, let me jump to the natural but spiritual first. Jabez did nothing. You hear nothing about him. His name simply means pain, suffering. But yet in the natural, Jabez had a relationship with God. And Jabez prayed. Now, first of all, when you pray, you ought to first believe in the God whom you are praying to. And then God says, when you first come to me, you got to first believe that I am God. And not only believe that I am God, and this is word, and you have to believe that I am a rewarder of them that diligently, what? Seek me. So now Jabez just sit there and he says, he said, God, enlarge my territory. That's all he asked for. And God did it. Now, we have books that's been written. Five steps through the Jabez prayer. And people have bought it. They have read it. And they still have not gotten an enlargement. I mean, we just got to be honest with it. They have not gotten an enlargement. Why? It's because the motive behind it. So you need to know who you are. God left you an inheritance. It belongs to you. God will take care of all. You know what? God takes care of our needs and our wants. You know, he will do it. See, and, 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 and you, have to, you have to understand the first spiritual. Now, now what? I know sometimes we, we'll tell you, you have to first see it in the spiritual before it manifests in the natural. And, and that is, that's, that is a, a, a true, true statement because most of the time we want it in the natural, but we never see it in the spirit. So, so wait a minute, Bishop, what is so important 
rather if I have to see it in the spiritual before it manifests in the natural. Because of who you're asking. If you don't believe in him who you're asking, because he is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you can't believe that he can do it, then it won't happen. Oh my God, I just had, I just had a, a news flash shared with y'all, came straight from heaven. In the book of Corinthians, Paul said that he is able, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly. That's very quick. And what else? That means more than what you asked for. What else? Above. That's above what? All that you what? Ask or what? So why do we pay people to lay hands and pray on us and put all on us to get what God says if you just ask and believe it shall be yours? See, let me, let me give you a little smart thing. If you want a Mercedes, ask God for it. But watch this. Ask him also to help you to provide the payment. You follow what I'm saying? Because God, if you can't help me with the payment, a promotion or an increase, then I don't want the car. Why? Because I can guarantee you folks, only for a moment, Tori, you'll see this. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I got my new car, y'all praise. And then about two months later, you'll see them walking with their head down. What happened? Oh, that's right. You know what? The devil came. Now you want to blame it on the devil. He took my car, but you know what? If he took it, then God didn't want me to have it. God got something greater. Quit lying. You just could not afford it. That's why whatever I ask God for, God, you know what? Show me how I can do this. Because what does the Bible say? Let me take you back spiritual. The Bible says that the blessings of God make it what? Rich. And it added what? No sorrow. So whatever God does, it would not add no sorrow to you. Amen? So start, start learning this stuff. Because look, I'm not telling you nothing what Jesus have not already said. We're just blinded. Jesus told him way when he was talking to his disciples, he said, you know what? False prophets have already entered in among the church. He called them wolves in sheep clothing. So they get excited. They get excited. I, I was there. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I was there. We all was there because we want it so bad. And it sounds so good, Trina, when I hear that God want me to have it all. Really? God wants you to have the mansion. Thank you, Jesus. What I always wanted. God wants you to have all this money. Woo! Hooli, hooli, hoo! You know? All of that. And then years later, I'm still where I'm, I'm stuck at. Then I'm wondering what's wrong. Then I'm wondering when people look and they say only the ones with money, cars, houses, and land. They are really in fellowship with God because this is God. Paul told Timothy, look, avoid such teachers. They will come in the last teaching that to gain is godliness. He says, stay away from them. So you mean to tell me the lady that lived in the shotgun house down in the bottom of Fifth Ward and she goes to God's house to worship God every Sunday? Every Wednesday, her tithes is only $2 and she only, but that's, she, she gives it consistently. So you mean to tell me she's not blessed? But only the person that live over in River Oaks. Well, another news flash. You don't see people down at the bottom of Fifth Ward in shotgun houses killing themselves. If you haven't been watching lately, you see rich people trying to sell their mantums now. They're losing them. Because the Bible says, what profit a man that came the whole world and lose his own soul? Spiritual. Again, spiritual. Spiritual. You know, so you need to understand what God is saying here. Verse 10 says, and, and, and I'm going to stop right along up in here, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, uh, he might gather together in one, all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have attained an inheritance. Everyone say inheritance. Yes. Being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. It, the bottom line, it becomes God's will. 
whatever God want to do. Now, 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 again, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying to be a good Christian, you have to be poor. Absolutely not, because the Bible says that God rejoices in the prosperity of his people. Prosperity is more than money. Prosperity means increase. The definition does not mean money, jewelry, diamonds. It means increase. A lot of people have increased financially, but not spiritually. Some have increased spiritually, but not financially. But if I had to take my choice, I'd rather increase spiritually and then figure out how to increase financially. You know, because you're going to need the spirit of God to, to help you. Because if you go back and read Jabez, that's what he asked God. He said, God, I just don't want you to increase my territory, but I need you to teach me some principles on how to deal with it. Because, see, you can have it all and, and use it the wrong way and end up with nothing. And when you have nothing, nobody want to deal with you. That's natural, physical, and spiritual. If you think I'm playing, the person on side, if you look at them and say, I love you so much. You're so beautiful. But you know what? Let them lose a little bit of that spiritual with their mind where you see them sitting on side of you doing like, do, did you hear that? You'll soon ease away from them and say, they are crazy. See, anytime you lose something, nobody. But you know what I love about God? Is that God is a restorer. You can lose everything spiritually. He will accept you and restore you back. You can lose everything physical and natural. He will take you and restore you back. God is a restorer. But we have to trust him. So it's our inheritance. Being predestined according to the purpose of him. Uh, who works all things after his own counsel and will. That we should be, verse 12, to the praise of his glory. Who first trusted in Christ. See, we are God's glory. To the praise of his glory. That's why even the angels looked and they said, God, what is man that you are so mindful of him? See? And, and then watch this here in verse 13. In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth. The word of truth. The word of truth. See what's going on. And I did it in, in the past. I didn't know no better. You know, it sounds good when we dictate and things sound good and make you happy. But you know what? God showed me something in his word. And then I started asking pastors and Bible scholars. I went back to what Paul told Timothy when he says, study to show thyself approved of them to God. Then he goes on down and he says, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we know that whatever we tell you is truth. But how can you divide truth? was my question to them. And everyone, when I pose that question to, they say, absolutely not. You cannot divide truth. And I say, but Paul told Timothy to rightly divide the word of truth. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, well, you know, that's easy. You have to know how to divide truth from a lie. I said, but he didn't say rightly divide truth from a lie. Anybody can divide truth from a lie, but how do you divide truth from truth? That was confusing to them. But then God taught me how you do it. Simple in this word. It wasn't nothing mysterious. I didn't get the shakes and the crumbles and the jerks. I just read it. As Jesus sit there, and here comes a woman being chased. My closing point. And as she stopped, they all got their stones. And they say, Lord, it is written in the law of Moses, because we caught this woman in the very act of adultery, that we should stone her to death. First of all, let me submit to you, they was not wrong. They were correct. That was true. But then Jesus wrote on the ground and says, he that without sin, let him cast the first stone. They dropped their stones. And then Jesus looks at her and he says, woman, where are thou accusers? She said, Lord, they have left. Then he looks at her. He says, go in peace, but sin no more. That's how you divide truth from truth. They was not wrong when they say stone her to death because grace and mercy has not been applied yet. See, now he was teaching them the valuable lesson on grace and mercy. So both parties was right. 
But what made it even more right is the end part with grace and mercy under Christ. So you have to learn how to divide truth from truth. See? In other words, if I say God wants to bless you, that's true. But if I tell you God wants you to first sow a seed of $1,000, that's not true. See? See, let me, and what do you mean about that? I know I got some scholars. They can easily say, wait a minute, Pastor. That is true because Paul said if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. That's true. But again, let's go back. God want to bless you. But he say first you need to sow. No, 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 no. See, because God never says sow it and then come to the altar and he's going to pray for you. You don't have to do nothing. You could give in secret and God will bless you out openly. So you don't need me to put all on you and lay hands on you. It's, it's no trickery to none of that. Look around. We are already blessed spiritually and naturally and physically. You know, we, we're already there. We're already there. I, I don't care. You know, you know, look, I'll use myself. Look, look at here. Now, looking at most people, I'm not really a delightful person to look upon. You know, opposed to my wife has this picture on her phone of me a long time ago. That dude was handsome. He had the six packs. The, that, that was natural, Tiffany. I just used some oil on it. And I, I looked at all, I, I mean, I was there. But now, you see what happened when time, let's see, only in the eyes of the beholder, so only in her eyes, I, I still, and like the blues man said, you know, like, remember he said that my mama could be lying to me too, my wife could be lying to me too, I don't know. But here's the point I want to make to you, if we get caught up on all those kind of things, but we don't realize, I don't care how big you are, how tall you are, how short you are, how wide you are. I don't care. You know what the Bible says? You still need to hold your head up. Why? Because if you understand spiritual and natural and physical, I don't longer have the six packs, but what? I'm a threat. Why? Because he created me wonderfully, beautifully. And that's what all matters. So you don't have to spend a fortune. People are not happy. They're spending a fortune to get what you have all around. Natural is the most beautiful thing in the world. You get to show them God's first. God, you get the glory for all of this. Women, when you're walking, and, and they will say at you and say, girl, you look good. Oh, praise God. God, you get all the glory for that. Because God's word says that he's a sustainer and he will keep us. Men, when they look at you, then you stick your chest out. Why? It's all spiritual. It's all spiritual. Make that spiritual contact. Get that spiritual relationship with God. Will you do that for me? Stand to your feet. Clap your hands and give God some praise. Spiritual. 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 That's, that's what spiritual would do. You know, when people look at people... And, and, you know, and, and people look and they say, oh, you know, Bishop is so strong. He buried his, his, you know, he was at his first grandmother, grandfather, his second grandmother and grandfather buried them. His brother, no, I'm not strong. I have those moments like everyone else. But when those moments come and they come spiritual, sorrow, I know who to go to and say, God, you say you'll be my comforter, that I would not weep as though those with no hope. I understand the general resurrection. So you have to dismiss certain things away from you. You know, you have to know what it's all about. Spiritual. Spiritual. You can make it. Join hands with somebody. Father.